In this video, I demonstrate the editing of a couple of wedding images using Capture One Pro. These are real wedding images from a real wedding which I shot with my A7 III and an A6000 as a B-cam. The complete edits are achieved using only Capture One Pro, which is an absolutely superb tool for this type of job. If you would like to try or buy Capture One Pro, then please use the links in the video description. Please give this video a thumbs up and also please subscribe. There's also a link in the video description to download the raw files and Capture One styles used in this video. You could use them to follow along. We'll make a start with this nice image which was taken with the A6000 and just the kit lens. I use the A6000 as a B-cam just for extra or incidental shots. The first thing I will do with this raw file is to add my basic preset. So here we go, styles and presets, user styles and wedding basic. This style just sets up a few things for me. A few basic settings to get me started on each image. In the exposure panel it sets the contrast to minus 15, just to soften the contrast slightly. Also it adjusts a few colours, so in the colour editor it mutes the greens by reducing the saturation and the lightness. It also adjusts the hue slightly to push the greens over towards the blues a little bit and it also alters the hue of the blue by shifting the colour slightly towards cyan. Just a little bit. In the skin tone panel it selects a basic skin tone, a default range. It also does some skin colour evening for me by setting the uniformity parameters like so. Not too much, just a little bit. The last thing that this style does is to adjust the clarity. It just gives me a minus 15 on the clarity and this clarity adjustment in conjunction with the default contrast adjustment in the exposure tab gives me a nice slightly smooth and soft starting point. I like soft and smooth for my wedding edits. OK, we've added our basic preset or style, which will be included in the download along with the raw images, so you can follow along if you want. The next thing to do is to set the white balance. And as this scene is mainly lit by the sunlight coming through the window over here, and there are no significant lights on in the hallway, just this tiny little wall light, the sun is having the most effect, so I'm going to choose daylight as a starting point. You may have to tweak this, but I know from experience that daylight is probably right because it makes all the whites seem properly white. So far so good. The next thing we're going to do is to fix this horrible dingy orangey yellow colour on the walls. I don't like it, so I'm going to lighten it up. It's pretty horrible and I'm sure it didn't look that murky when we were there. Let's go to the colour editor and advanced, grab our picker, select a yellow in the scene. Now I just want to make sure that I'm only grabbing yellow and not actually affecting much of the rest of the image such as the skin. So view the selected colour range and we can see we do have skin selected here. We will be affecting the skin and I really do only want to be affecting the walls so all we have to do with this is to bring down the smoothness to reduce the ramp of the colour and then I just move this around and then move the whole pie slice until we just affect the wall. We now have mostly wall and not much skin if any but we're losing a little too much wall here. So another little tweak, back we go. You just have to play with this until you reach a good compromise. That's good enough, we're not quite covering the wall here and here, but I'm pretty certain it'll be good enough for the effect we're after. Just try a little tweak on this. No, no difference really. Okay, so let's turn off view selected colour range, and let's make the wall look nicer. So we'll reduce the saturation a bit. Just bring it down bit by bit, fiddle with it until it's where we want it, about there. And then I'll lighten the walls up using the lightness slider, I think about there, and that's pretty nice. And as you can see, we basically softened and brightened the walls, though I would like this to be a little lighter. 
So I'll just try moving this around a tad more to see if it affects the skin very much. Good, it hasn't affected the skin very much at all. And we have nice light, even tones on all of the walls. Next, let's take a look at exposure. The most important part, really. I'll just select my hand tool and shut down the unnecessary tabs. And then I'll make sure I have the tabs I need open. So exposure, high dynamic range, histogram and levels. With these three tools open and my histogram so that I can see what I'm doing, I'm ready to attack the exposure. The first thing that I'll do with the exposure, because this is a very sunny scene, and I want to make the whites as white as they can be, as white as possible, is to set the highlights to 100. To protect the highlights and the whites as much as possible, I should be able to push the whites and lights, brighten up the scene as much as possible, without clipping the whites, or very little in any case. I'll also just raise the shadows a tad, just as a starter, I think about there will do. Okay, so next we'll just increase the brightness. I want the scene to be nice and bright. I think around there will be fine. It looks a bit washed out at the moment, but we will be using the levels tool to add contrast. In fact, we'll do that now. So let's just bring in the blacks to around, I think about 38. That looks pretty nice and bring down the whites. I'm bringing down the whites to a point where they're very white, very bright, but without actually clipping the highlights too much, just to the point where the dress or important parts of the scene are not blowing out. It's just blowing out here. So I'm just going to bring down the exposure a little bit like so. There we go. And now we can see that we have a really nice bright scene. The whites are very white and on the dress at least, the whites are not actually blowing out, they're just under. Now I don't use the exposure warning for this, I do it by eye. The exposure warnings work fine, but I find that the human being is a little bit more forgiving. A human can understand the scene. Now over here, it's completely blown out. But as it is blown out in the raw file, all I can do is try to make it look a bit better. I can try to reduce it a bit just to make it so it doesn't look so harsh. Okay, so let's have an attempt at doing something with these highlights. So let's first add another layer. So layers and plus, then press B to bring up the brush. Then I'll right click, make the brush a little smaller, move the high dynamic range up to 100 and paint over the highlights. Just paint away. In fact, I think I'll paint over the whole of this section. It'll look more even, it'll look better, I think. And now we've neutralized as many of the blown out highlights as we can. We'll never rescue it all, such as this bit here. Now I'll just bring down the opacity of this layer until I'm satisfied with the amount of highlight recovery. I think that's about right. Yep, that'll do. So I've recovered highlights without it becoming too dark, which is pretty good. And now it is time to smooth the skin we're going to add a nice bit of skin smoothing. All we have to do is select our base layer, our background layer, select the color editor and select the skin tone tab. We have the skin tone selected and the uniformity set for the tone range. And if I view selected color range, you can see we've mainly got the skin. A little bit of the carpet and the wall, but I'm not worried about that as I won't be changing the color Unselect view selected color range. Now I'm going to create a layer especially for the skin. Select the three dots here on the color editor with the skin tone panel active, then select create mask layer from selection. It takes a second. If we go up to our layers, we now have a new layer and if we press M to view our mask, we can see our selection. 
With this new layer selected, I go to Styles and Presets. And as you can see, I've got the Styles and Presets tool on my Exposure tab. It just allows me to whiz up and down the tools without having to change tabs. It just makes things quicker and easier. Now I'll right click on my Smooth Skin Style and select Apply to Selected Layer. And as soon as I hit that, let's take a look. It's smooth the skin. If I turn the layer off, there we go. And if you look at the skin and I turn it back on, it's given us a little bit of skin smoothing. And all that does, all that preset does, or the style does, it sets the clarity to minus 50. And because lowering the clarity, especially that much, will make the skin seem just a bit on the soft side, it also adds a little sharpening just to add back some definition, as you can see here. So my skin style reduces clarity, adds a little bit of sharpening. And this combination is what I use as my default skin smoothing. And it works quite well. Back to the exposure tab. That's looking pretty good. And the next little job is to add a slight vignette just to even out the scene. On the Layers tool, press plus, then press T on the keyboard, which will start up the Radial Gradient Mask tool. Then just drag out the gradient mask, like so, and center it. And then once that's done, over to the exposure and bring down the brightness just a little bit, just until I think the scene, the image is balanced. I think about there. That looks pretty nice. That's just dim the outside a little bit. It's a really subtle thing but it does make a difference and it helps to focus the eye just a bit into the center of the screen. Next a tiny bit of clean up using the spot tool but first a note about the skin layer masking. Let's quickly go back to this skin layer, the skin smoothing layer, and view the mask by pressing M. At the moment, it's applying the skin preset to everywhere where the mask is red. But you don't actually notice the skin smoothing effect on the carpets and the walls. But if you wanted to, you could press E on your keyboard, bring up the eraser, and just erase it from the areas that you don't want to be smoothed but people don't notice it. The bride notices that her skin looks nice and smooth, or at least she doesn't see horrible skin. Anyway, I don't usually get rid of it. I leave it as is. All right, so the last thing to do is a bit of cleanup. I know for a fact, because she told me, that this little mark on her arm here is a burn. And she asked me earlier if I could get rid of that burn in the photographs, and of course I said yes, it's easy. All we do is zoom in, grab our spot tool, or press O on your keyboard. Then left square bracket to make it smaller in this case, like so, and then one click and it's gone. Let's just zoom out to take a look. Okay, so let's take a look around the scene and see if we can see anything else that needs removing. And no, it looks pretty clean. Is there anything on him? No. No little bits of fluff or lint. Absolutely fine. Spotless. Let's have a quick look at our work. Before and after. And before and after. Great. This is a real fun image, but as we can see, it has a few problems. It's got an assistant photographer barging into my shot. And it's got a groom on the left who looks like he's doing a great big burp. But the biggest thing is that it's underexposed as far as the car and the people are concerned. Sometimes you can't avoid exposure problems, you do your best. I did have my A7 III set to spot metering on the face. And this is how it came out. So. The first thing to do is to apply the basics. We'll deal with the exposure in a minute, but for now we'll just get right in and add my Wedding Basic Style. There we go, Wedding Basic Style applied. Next, 
into the white balance and I'm not going to use shot. The A7III's auto white balance is not that great. So I'll set it to daylight and that will give me a good starting point for my white balance. I may not even need to change it. For the first job we'll do some cropping, get rid of these people that are at the edge of the photograph. Crop tool and I want to have this central area as the main image. Right click to make sure I'm on original ratio. Then start by dragging the left corner down to get a head near the top. A little tweak then grab the bottom right hand corner and bring that up. I don't want to cut off her feet. Okay, that's a good start, but I think I'd like to just bring it down a bit. Trying to balance centering the bride with showing more of the driver. He was great. Left a tad. And trying to use the rule of thirds, roughly. Putting the rules of third lines, vertical lines, on both of them. Gives some symmetry and makes the image look quite balanced. Okay, so that's the crop. That's great, I like that. We've got no photographer, no husband. They're about the right size, nice one. After the crop, the first thing we'll attack is the exposure. And because I want nice bright whites and lights, I'll bring the highlights all the way to 100. And I'm going to bring up the shadows. We really need to recover the shadows, but only to about 50 for now. I may change it later. It will depend on the rest of our exposure adjustments. Okay, let's open up the tools we need to adjust the exposure. Exposure, levels, and histogram. Shut down the high dynamic range for now. We'll just use these and obviously the histogram. We need that to see what we're doing, or it helps anyway. I think I'll start this time with the highlights and bring them down until I think the whites are just clipping, which is, I can probably go quite a bit further than that. Let's have a look. I'll leave it about there for now. Then we'll try to bring up the blacks. We may not need to add more contrast. It's a suck it and see thing. I'll leave it there for now. Okay. Next, have a little tweak with the exposure. Let's try bringing it up a bit. No, I don't really think I need to do that, but I definitely need to add brightness to the scene. So bring up the mid-tones with the brightness slider. There we go. That's very bright and summery and light, but the dress is too overexposed. So we'll bring this back just a tad. I think about there. That looks really nice. Next, colour. I want to adjust the colour in the foliage and make the sky more blue. The sky looks a little washed out, so down to the colour editor and advanced. First of all, select the greens. And I think I'll bring the lightness of the greens down a little bit, just to give them a little more contrast against the bride and the car. This is really a consequence of the image being underexposed to start with. Let's first increase the saturation to make them a little more colourful. Then I'll make the foliage darker, bring down the lightness, and keep looking and moving the slider until it's about right. That'll do. That's great. They're more substantial and not washed out at all. The greens look nice in the bouquet too. Now let's take a look at the blues for the sky. And the hue is fine, it's slightly cyan which is what I like, not too far. I definitely want to increase the saturation a bit. So up with the saturation and I think about there. And then darken the blues down to darken the blues in the sky. I don't want to go too dark, maybe a bit lighter, and I think about there. 
I've got a nice blue sky and green foliage behind the car. Very nice. I just want to adjust the hue of the car just a little bit to make it a little more magenta. On the advanced tab of the colour editor, select the colour picker and select a nice red in the car. A quick view of the selected colour range. That's fine. Then I'll just move the hue left towards magenta. And there we are, that's about right, yep, minus 10. A nice round number and it looks fine. Next, just darken that magenta a little bit, make it look more rich. That's really nice. And I think that's much nicer. It's looking very pretty indeed. And next I'm going to add my vignette. Select layers, press T for the radial gradient tool. And as soon as I start drawing with the radial mask tool, it will add a layer for me, add a mask layer. Then just stretch out my radial mask, like so. Check it's in position, and that looks absolutely fine. Over to the exposure tool and bring down my brightness just a little bit until I think the scene is about balanced. And then for even finer control, adjust the layer opacity. And it's a really nice way of checking it too. Using the opacity gives me very, very fine control, uh, um, like a sub-control after the brightness control. It's just what I do. You get into habits when you've been editing for a long time. And I think that's really nice. Yep, very good. That evens out the scene very nicely. That's the vignette done, so the next stage is to smooth the skin. So here we go, down to the colour editor. Colour editor, make sure our background layer is selected, and then go to the colour editor, not the colour balance, that's the colour balance. Go to the colour editor, and make sure we're on skin tone. And we'll just have a quick look at the colour range. That's okay, you won't notice the effect on the car. So I won't wipe it away, I'll leave it as is. Then select the three dots, like so, and create mask layer from selection. And now we have a separate layer for the skin, which is already selected, like so. There's the mask. All the skin is selected, etc. Then down to styles and presets. Right click on smooth skin and apply to selected layer. Let's take a look. Off and on. And if we do it again, Lay it off, lay it on. Now you can see we've smoothed the skin and you don't notice it in the car. Maybe because the car is pretty smooth anyway, or something. Right then, let's have a little look around to see if we can see anything that needs fixing. There's nothing on our arms. I don't touch things like moles or birthmarks. Unless I'm specifically asked to because that's who you are really, isn't it? Of course, I will get rid of a big zit that appears on the end of your nose on the day, or a burn, or a bruise, or something like that, if I'm asked to. Or if it really needs it. Let's just check to see if the sky's clear. Yep, it's fine. All the skin's fine. We're clean. And we're done. We've cropped out the people and fixed the underexposure. And it looks great. Let's take a look. Before and after, and before, and after. Lovely.